Hello and welcome to another video. Today is part two of this matrix diorama build. As you can see, I've got a fair amount done from the last time we checked in. I was able to secure the car. This is a Jada Toys Dub City Cadillac sedan. Now, this is what the wheels come like. And I thought I was gonna have to like source out some 124 scale wheels and tires, but I realized if I just pop these off and flip them around, and then I actually set them a little bit lower based on where they attached and it actually gives me the look I need. So the other nice thing about that is it sits kind of uneven now. Uh, it's higher on this side and that's what I want because with the force perspective, if it is higher on this side, it kind of goes along with the, the effect I'm trying to get. And then that necessitated me to create this block for Morpheus to stand on. And that's going to be level once this is at its final angle. Beyond that, I have spray painted this with that same kind of granite texture that I used on the pillars and the walls in the lobby scene. This stuff is difficult to use out of the can because it doesn't mist very well. Like, it all just kind of wants to come out at once and that can make it kind of globby in certain areas. And I ended up with some real unevenness and what I decided to do was to take some high grit sandpaper and sand it down. And that did two things for me. One, it, it did help even things out and two, it gave it a lighter color, which is nice because, you know, typically it's like this kind of dark, almost black look. Sanding it made it look lighter, and then that actually is going to be the finished look for the road. So I don't have to do any painting to it beyond that. I'm just going to paint the stripes on. So what's next? As I mentioned, painting the stripes. I'm going to paint the barriers all a lighter color to match. I've got this piece of corrugated cardboard here to be the guardrail. And then I'll need to support that with some little wood pieces, so that'll go in. And uh, beyond painting and weathering, we are going to put a backdrop on here. Found this image online and altered it in Photoshop to give it more of that green matrix haze. And then I printed it up at FedEx office. And that's going to go like this, probably a little bit lower than that. But that's going to give it the full on background look that we want. I also need to detail the vehicle some more. So it's going to have bullet holes painted all over it. I'm also going to take some rubbing alcohol and get rid of this Dub City logo here just to make it a little bit more screen accurate. So that's a rundown of where we're at and what we're going to do, so let's get to it. All right, let's take a look at the car here. Uh, apologies for the background noise. I have a fan going because my entire studio smells like spray paint. <laughs> um, so I've finished painting the bullet holes on it. And I'll insert a, a photo of what the car looks like in the movie so you can see what I was going for. The next bit is just to finish it off by adding a little bit of the cotton batting that we used. 
for the explosions to do a little bit of steam come out of the engine compartment and we're just going to basically put it under the hood close it boom I would like it to be a little less directional there we go I think that'll work all right so that will finish the Cadillac and this was the last bit we needed so next up will be the reveal of the final piece all right and here's the final look in the display case and I'm very pleased with how this turned out the spray paint fumes are coming at me so I can't wait to get the plexiglass back on this to cover it up <laughs> but um, yeah, so we've seen the bottom half in the part one of this sequence, but I want to show you some of the stuff I did uh, to Trinity specifically. I painted her sunglasses so that they have a silver rim like they're supposed to uh, in the film, and then I, I also painted things so that they'd be in the lines more. It's hard to see. I gave her a more natural skin tone with, with a wash, which isn't going to show up on camera, but... Um, and then uh, I also gave her this bag. This is a bag I had from GPS lot. It came with something, I believe, and I just uh, made some little straps for it. So it looks like she's holding that duffel bag. And then Neo, I actually found a better way to, to hit that bullet dodging pose. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and uh, you can see here, we've got the bullet time and the explosions. If you haven't watched part one of this video, uh, I would encourage you to go check out the build process for this bottom half here, which is the, the lobby scene. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at Morpheus now. Now, this is a figure that I made at least a year ago, probably a little longer. I used the knockoff Mezco Joker suit, and then that is a Marvel Legends uh, Toy Biz Blade jacket. And then, um, the McFarlane toys head and then I used a chrome Molotov chrome pen on the glasses because Morpheus's glasses are actually like mirror shiny rather than being black so I wanted to uh, try to capture that look now initially I, I had to go back and change this a little bit uh, because that little platform he's standing on uh, in order to make him standing on a level surface it was a little too high it wasn't working with the force perspective the way that it should have. Now, ideally, he'd be a little bit lower, I think, for this to really work. But with the space I have, this was the most forward I could make him. And I think it works. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy overall with the, the way that that turned out. Um, I did, as you can see, some scuff marks along the barriers. But yeah, you know, if you're a 112 scale collector, this is a really fantastic way to maximize the space you have you know space is at a premium for all of us right i mean we're always trying to figure out how we can fit more stuff um you know as our collection grows and, and and now i've actually done this on two shelves if you've not seen the video for my nolan trilogy custom diorama um you know i've got one two three four five or even 15 right you know six 15 16 figures on that um in a way that works and is cohesive you know here we've got three obviously and prior to this, you know, I, these were being displayed in separate things and it was taking up two shelves in the Detolf and I just wanted to consolidate and, and also highlight this film series in my collection because it is one of my favorites. The third one, you know, whatever, but I love the first two. And the first one especially is just you know, a perfect movie in, in my opinion. So this was a great way to do it and to accommodate more than one figure. I also have a custom uh, Matrix Reloaded Neo, you know, in the in the like Cossack um, sort of priest outfit thing that he wears. It's such a cool look, almost like a kung fu priest. Um, but I need to figure out where else to put that. I'm thinking I have some wall space off to the side here, and I'm thinking I'm going to mount a shelf and put the McFarlane Chateau diorama there with him on it. So they'll all be kind of in one area. As usual, I will have links in the description below to some of the supplies that I use here. I didn't go over it so much in this one because I talked about it at length in part one, but I'll mention them down below. 
And of course, if you all have any questions about any of the materials, let me know down in the comments. So that's going to do it for part two of this Matrix build. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing more dioramas, more custom figures, more custom vehicles. I'd love for you to come along with me as we build those. At the beginning of this video, you'll see a trailer for my graphic novel, Retroactive. It's kind of a spy-fi thriller. It's like James Bond meets Groundhog Day. I'm very proud of it. I'd love for you to check it out. There's a link in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, keep your head on swivel.